This is Sal Calora, the UCS guy, and uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about VM Link and hardware. And uh, I often get asked uh, about Cisco UCS's integration with VMware, and today we're going to talk a little bit about it. And I'll probably do uh, a couple of videos, try to keep these short. Um, this is an overview, just talking about what the functionality is, what it does, why it's important, um, and how it manifests itself inside of UCS. So what you see here is a UCS system um, in my Bellevue lab here in Washington. And um, on the VM tab, as you can see here, um, you connect it to uh, your vCenter. Um, and, and for me, it's uh, dot .149. So what you do is you take a plug-in, uh, a set of XML, uh, data right here. You say export the extension and then you're able to actually um, uh, take a, a piece of XML code and, uh, and import it into your vCenter. Um, if you go in here and you go to plugins you can see that there's actually um, this this plugin right here um, that is uh, there for the ability for UCSM to talk to uh, vCenter and that's uh, how you get the two-way communication between the two. Um, and then also you create uh, the DVS uh, on the actual UCS system. And, and again, I'll, I'll probably go into this in detail in other videos in terms of the setup. In fact, on salsdclist.com, um, there's four videos that actually go take you through the actual setup of this. What I'm here to talk about today is more the functionality and, and why it's important. Um, so if you look, I've got the DVS here with four profiles underneath it. And if you go into uh, VMware here, uh, you could see that if I go to the networking tab here, you could see that this DC Comwest BLV is there. And then here you've got your VM kernel, uh, VM data traffic, etc. These are just port groups that sit underneath. One thing that's important, and this is the reason why people think um, it's, it's really good uh, functionality, is the fact that all of the configuration elements for the port group in terms of what VLAN it sits in, in this case I've got VLAN 90 being sent down to the system, um, uh, you also get the capability of enabling CDP or changing a pin group or enabling QoS. And so that's why down on a on a port by port basis, it's actually port group by port group basis, you get to set this stuff up. So it's actually um, very good functionality, very easy to use. The other key piece of this is that it enables you to see on a host by host basis, in this case, this is chassis one, blade three, as you can see here, server one, three. Um, this this chassis is running a virtual machine called Cacti EZ. So if I go over to um, my uh, my inventory here on hosts and clusters, you could see I've got the Cacti EZ machine um, actually running. You know. Uh, uh, sitting inside of, of, uh, of a virtual machine. But what's really nice is that I can actually see this system and actually see the NIC that's attached to it. So I've actually got an emulated NIC right here on this system. So if I go here and I go to edit settings, there's this NIC right here. And it's sitting in this VM dash data traffic. It's an emulated you know, E1000 NIC. Um, but what's nice is that I can actually get visibility to that NIC uh, from inside of UCS. And even when I do a vMotion, the, the system will move uh, from machine to machine, right? So if I were to go into, uh, into here and I move this Ubuntu down, I'm going to go ahead and drag this down and do a vMotion you'll actually see the capability of the system once it actually migrates down you'll see the the UCS update um, the other key thing I think is important is if you look at a at a cacti graph uh, for example if I go into cacti and I go to fabric B here and uh, let me go ahead and pull up the graph you actually can see virtual Ethernet 795 um, the traffic coming in and out of that NIC which is the NIC that's pointed right here, VNIC 795. So one of the things that's nice is you get down to the virtual machine level visibility uh, for all of your virtual NICs in your system. And so this makes it very, very easy. And as you can see here, now the Ubuntu 01 is sitting on server host 1.3. And then these are the two physical NICs that are in the box. But these are the virtual NICs that are under the Ubuntu machine. So in this case, if I go to the Ubuntu machine and I do a, a settings there, there are actually two network adapters that I'm exposing 
to the OS itself, right? So these are the two. So the two network adapters that are being exposed are actually highlighted in the actual UCS interface. And so whenever somebody comes to me and says, well, hey, you know, Ubuntu One is having some, some performance issues on the network, I can go ahead and, and monitor these interfaces using simple SNMP commands. Uh, as well as in version 1.4 of UCS Manager, which should be coming out at the end of October time frame, you'll be able to actually do span destinations as well. So this is part of, the, of a key thing that only UCS can do, and the integration with VMware is very simple and straightforward. And I'll cover that in another video, but uh, I wanted to make you guys aware of, of what's possible um, with this system and, and the visibility that you get down to that virtual machine level. Even when things are vMotioning all over the place, you still get that capability um, and the ability to, to, to track these interfaces and be able to monitor them, etc. So that's basically all I had, but um, I'll, uh, I'll follow up with some other videos. Thanks a lot for watching.